Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to really quickly show you how you can apply Gauss's Law to find the electric field magnitude for a uniform spherical charge distribution. Now, Gauss's Law, uh, I'm going to skip over the whole idea of flux in this video, and basically just apply Gauss's Law for a um, closed Gaussian surface. So we're looking at a surface integral, which is why the circle is through there, and what Gauss's Law says is that the surface integral of the electric field dot product of dA, where dA is an area vector, when you take that dot product all around the surface, it's equal to the enclosed charge, Qn, divided by the permittivity constant, epsilon naught. For a uniform spherical charge distribution, so I can draw it, say, in cross-section as a circle, and try to connect it up, and I'll give this a charge of positive Q, then the electric field which I'll draw in green, will be directed outwards from that. And we know that uh, if it's uniformly distributed, or if it's a conductor, um, in which case if it's a conductor, then it will just naturally distribute itself uniformly anyway. What we know is that the electric field is perpendicular to the surface of the sphere everywhere along. So each of these is perpendicular. To apply Gauss's Law then, I'm going to actually draw a Gaussian surface in red, and I'm going to use a spherical Gaussian surface, and you generally want to actually use the same shape as the charge distribution, and the reason for that is to make the math easier. In this case, I end up with a really simple integral, because for any point along here, I can have an area vector, any point on the surface, I can have an area vector that is also going to be perpendicular to the surface and pointing outwards. So what that means is that the electric field and dA are always in the same direction. So when I have that dot product of E dot dA, that simplifies, and I can express this as it would be E times dA times cosine of the angle theta between them, because the area vectors dA are always perpendicular to the sphere, and the electric field is always perpendicular to the sphere. That angle theta becomes zero degrees, so we get E times dA cos of zero degrees, and that should be zero degrees, and uh, cos of zero degrees is one. So this actually simplifies down to E times dA, and then the integral simplifies to E dA, and then we still have Q enclosed over epsilon naught. The next step is to actually look at how we can simplify and solve the integral. For every point on the Gaussian surface, it's a certain distance away because we have a spherical Gaussian surface. The electric field is going to have the same magnitude, which means that the magnitude of E is constant, and I can actually pull that out of the surface integral. So we get E times the surface integral of dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So then I simplify or solve for the surface integral. The surface integral of dA simplifies down to the area of that Gaussian surface is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And the area of a sphere is four pi r squared. So I'm simplifying this down, I get four times pi, and this is r of the Gaussian surface squared equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now the whole point of this was to solve for E, so I can isolate E, I get E is equal to Q enclosed over four pi r squared times epsilon naught. When I was teaching, I often talked about the electric field from a point charge, E as K times Q over r squared, where K was equal to one over four times pi times epsilon naught. Now, if I go back down on the left, I can actually rewrite this as, say, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then the rest of it becomes q in over r squared. So this first part really is just k, so I end up with k times q enclosed over r squared. And that's basically it. So what this means is that the electric field for a point charge and the electric field for a uniform spherical charge distribution really are the same thing. They have the same mathematical expression. And that is true as long as Q enclosed, or Q in, which I guess would mean inside, is equal to the point charge, or it's equal to the total charge. In this case, it's the total charge on the sphere, but if we were looking at it and comparing it to the point charge, then it would be 
the total charge and the point charge. So what happens then, what if the radius of the Gaussian surface is less than, so let's call that RGS, is less than the radius of the sphere? In that case, the enclosed charge would be zero. And then the electric field is, would be K times zero over R squared, which simplifies down to zero. Nice, easy math. So the, to summarize all of this, what we have then is when the radius is bigger than the radius of the sphere, or equal to, the electric field magnitude is equal to k times q of the sphere over r squared. When r is less than the radius of the sphere, then the electric field is equal to zero. And that's it. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please like it in YouTube to let me know.